Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Undisputed Arguments Wrestling. And unlike last show, we starting this show off with some actual wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest is scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first, residing in Hollywood, California, weighing in at 215 pounds, Undisputed Wrestling's shining star. The superstar. We are starting off with the superstar. Last week, the superstar issued the challenge. Not just any challenge. Not just any person. The superstar issued a challenge to our undisputed arguments wrestling world heavyweight champion King Win. And I'm assuming he tried to jump his way to the main event scene to pay for the power budget because that's no longer coming out of my pocket. But he made that challenge. But one thing about the superstar that like him or hate him, every week he shows up to wrestling. Wrestling is in his blood. The problem is his attitude. I mean, as you can see, that he's all all about himself. But nobody can doubt his wrestling skills, his wrestling talent. He is what you would call a prodigy. And with that comes the love to wrestle. So he's out here to wrestle every single week. And this time he has the challenge of this man. and his opponent, from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing in at 213 pounds, Lightning Gutierrez. Lightning Gutierrez, last week he was involved in the gauntlet match that we will talk about later this evening. Uh, the gauntlet match that was won by Ice Wolf. But again, listen, we'll talk about that later. Lightning, Lightning Gutierrez wanted another shot against another wrestler, despite uh, despite his record. So we gave him the superstar. Uh, Lightning Gutierrez hope, hoping to get on the winning track at some point. I don't know if this match is going to be the one to get him on the winning track after I just build up the superstar as all all his talents, but Lightning Gutierrez is no slouch either. In fact, two of his three losses have been because so he's been distracted. Not mentally, like he was distracted by Cynthia in his two losses to Nathan Pontarelli. But enough about Nathan, this is about the superstar Lightning Gutierrez, and we are down the ringside, and the superstar starts off with a straight arm drive. Lightning tried to start the start the match off strong and now he's starting off underneath as the Supers are working on the legs of lightning oh and then a knee right to the right to the mask of lightning Gutierrez he starts working on the legs Lightning Gutierrez likes to keep the pace flowing and has a finisher of a knee strike and it'll work the legs so it'll be hard to get any strength behind those kicks and those kicks and those knees as lightning Gutierrez yeah like I said working the working the knee of lightning Gutierrez and the arm the superstar has not let lightning get out of the gate as a kick to the back the super, superstar coming out with a pair trying to prove a point it is cut and he's got a mean streak. 
the superstar who did win, who did defeat El Corridor at Unfeeling Prepare for War uh, earlier this month or last month, or whatever this or whatever this is, is released. Uh, but that was with controversy as he won with his feet on the ropes. As a German super and a bridge, what a move by the superstar. Two and a kick out at two. The superstar, again, all in control of Latin Gutierrez. Puts him against the ropes. What is he going to go for? Oh, elbow. Latin Gutierrez trying to fight back. Throws him into the corner. Double knees. There's the knees we were talking about by Latin Gutierrez. And showing off to the crowd. Oh, you man, what's around? Oh. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Superstar got him up. Kiss the sky. KTS by the superstar. One, two, three. And that is why you, I preach this every single show. Do not turn your back on your opponent. The minute Lenny Harris got on top, he turned his back and got hit with the KTS immediately. The winner of the match, the superstar as the superstar hat of has to be proud of his performance got, got in and got out not a scratch on him wait a minute and speaking of there is our champion King Quinn coming down in ring gear And stepping into the ring. These two had a war of words last week. And King Quinn left the ring last time. It's like he's getting into the ring. Look at this. These two are definitely, definitely going to go one-on-one -on -one at some point in the future. But that's enough of that. We do have more to come. We In our main event. First off, you like how I look now? Look at me. But in our main event, we do have A-List Jade going up against a mystery opponent of Kathleen Grace's choosing. We also have Bobby Blaze taking on Kobayashi, defending the honor of House of Power teammate Antonio Franco, who Kobayashi attacked during the gauntlet match last week. But up next... We hear from our pure, undisputed arguments wrestling, pure wrestling champion, Valentine Hunt. And speaking of the champ, out he comes now. We just saw our world heavyweight champion, and here is our pure wrestling champion ladies and gentlemen please welcome the undisputed wrestling pure wrestling champion valentine hunt valentine hunt like we stare um last week or last show valentine hunt had the old had the gauntlet match made looking for new challengers and that match should have been won by Remy Skull, who defeated not one, not two, but three straight individuals. That being Nathan Pontarelli, Ryan Rudin, and then Lightning Gutierrez. But then this man, our champion Valentine Hunt, came out and introduced a bit a sixth competitor. That competitor being Ice Wolf. Ice Wolf kick the bones of Remy Skull who like had been through three straight matches and then to make to add insult to injury Valentine Hunt then attacked Remy Skull after the match so I will hope he's coming out here to explain those actions of last show
Of course he is. We all know the rightful contender should be Remy Skull. He rightfully won the match. But instead, Valentine Hunt gives the challenge to Ice Wolf. With that being said, if both Ice Wolf and Remy Skull are healthy, Ice Wolf himself coming up a grueling Philadelphia street fight against Axeman and Arthur at Prepare for War. If both of them were healthy, me personally, I would rather go against Remy Skull than Ice Wolf. So I'm actually now I'm thinking about I am confused. Why is he why is he straight giving a championship match to Ice Wolf? I mean I guess when you're the champion you think you can defeat everybody. But most champions would want would rather take the easier fight. Hmm. Maybe Maybe, maybe I've get, maybe I've given Fountain a, a little too much too much flack. I guess he wanted the I guess he true his word he wanted the harder competition. And you see that's a pure wrestling title held up by Japanese ref. Japanese ref himself has got fined a few thousand for his incompetencies at prepared for war. As the bell rings, as we are underway, Valentine Hunt challenges Ice. That cha hmm, Valentine Hunt the challenger, Ice Wolf the champion. Ice Wolf is sitting. Down. You I take everything back. I take I take everything back. At what I just said about this man. The winner of the match, and still undisputed wrestling pure wrestling champion, Valentine Hunt. I mean, quite literally, the only person who's probably wrestled on the show more than Valentine Hunt is the superstar. But the superstar at least will never do something like this. These two were really in cahoots the whole time. Ice Wolf, the monstrous laid down for him. That's despicable. Oh, and he, here comes Remy Skull. We know that music. Remy Skull, the, I said it before, I'll say it again, the rightful winner of that gauntlet match on the last show. I'm, I'm a, I am sure he, just like me and everyone else, are disgusted at the act we just saw from Valentine Hunt. And you know, Ice Wolf, you're not getting off, off from this either because we saw what you can, we saw the bonds you could do. Why would you lay down for this? You could have been the champion. Why would you lay down for him? Wait, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Oh, Axman! That's Axman Arthur! And he's got a chair! Axman Arthur taking a chair to Ice Wolf! And more! Oh my god! He mangled! He wrapped the chair! Look at the chair! He wrapped it all on the back of Ice Wolf! Valentine Hunt is just, just a shot to everybody else! Oh! Skull trouble by Remy! Valentine Hunt! And Ice Wolf getting their just desserts. And just like they formed the alliance, we have a, a new alliance with Remy Skull and Axeman Arthur as well. These two both have a gripe against these two. Let's see where this goes. 
for the for next coming show. And don't forget, still to come, we have the main event. A-list J taking on Kathleen Grace's mystery opponent. But while you're here, don't, don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment. Leave some criticism. T tell me how I'm doing. And subscribe. And most definitely subscribe. And hit the bell too if you like. That 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 will that will be nice too. Alright, it is time for the first of two ladies matches tonight. We got our main event, and then we got this. The following match is a scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first, fresh from the nightclub, got leading in at 129 pounds. Diamond. For those of you who did who do not watch our Proven Ground show, first off, you should. Second off, you would have seen Diamond on a Proven Ground show. I believe she defeated Cynthia. The last time we saw her on Unspeed Arguments Wrestling Proven Grounds. And she asked to she asked for a step up in competition. All shade and all disrespect to Cynthia. So we decided to find a mystery opponent for Diamond. I know we have a mystery opponent in our main event, but my show my rules. But who will her mystery opponent be? Oh! Fresh off of getting released from the from the Federation up north. And now down here. And her opponent. Making her UA wrestling debut. From Seven Hills, Ohio. Waiting in at 125 pounds. Dana. Brooke. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not watch, like I said, the, the Federation up north, Dana Brooke has made her way to Unspeed Dana Brooke is undisputed. The 15 times, yes, I had, I, I Googled and fact checked that, that is actually true. 15 time, 24 seven champion. Did she win a tag title? I don't think she did. 15 time, 24 seven champion, Dana Brooke is here and is challenging Diamond with a power bomb off rim. Damn, Brooke, those muscles are not just for show as for powerbound straight to abdominal stretch. Showing there is left. I believe she's she has been wrestling for, I believe, over 10 years. I want to say I may be wrong. As a hurt, as a twisting hurricane runner. Dana Brooke is all over Diamond with a fall in a drop kick. All over Diamond showing there's levels to where you can go just beating on the back. And then flexing. Oh, went for it again. Diamond has scouted. Can Diamond finally get some offense in on this match? And she turned her back on the opponent. What have we learned? Do not take it back to the opponent. Power bomb, sit out version. One and a one count. Dana Brooke using all of her strength to keep the high flying and flexible diamond grounded. Dana Brooke on the top rope. Big splash. Should have should have kept with the strength as now diamond in control and diamond's first official offense. A net. And a twisting splash. There we go. Diamond showing off the athleticism. Grabs her word, taking her to the 
through. Uh, nope, nope. Annabrook fighting out of it. Throws her off the ropes. Just throws her over and straight into the pin. No waste of motion by Dana Brooke. That's a two count. The first two count goes to Dana Brooke. And as cocky as ever. Again, showing levels. And back to the back. Pound on it. And then flex on it. Dana Brooke in complete control and now working the legs. Trying to keep the high flyer grounded. Fun fact about Dana Brooke, I did I did while doing the slim research I did. We got one count, two count, and a kick out. Dana Brooke was trained to wrestle, this is according to her Wikipedia, to wrestle by Norman Smiley from WCW. Fun fact. As Diamond is tries to get out of the way, Dana Brooke goes to the top rope. And no, uh, I guess you remember what happened last time. He's gonna let Diamond get back in the ring. And Dana Brooke throws her in the corner. To the top. What should she be going for? Goes up the mirror. And big superplex! Diamond! Diamond has not been able to. And Danbrook center. Danbrook could be going for the finish off the superplex. As the arm hook. Trying to wear Diamond down. Diamond fighting out. As Diamond gets out of it. Punch the Diamond. Clothesline by Diamond. Another clothesline. Danbrook tried to give her a kick. Sweep the leg. Diamond getting some momentum back into this match. Throws her off the ropes. Off the ropes again. Drop kick by Diamond. That drop kick caught her rebounding straight off of the ropes. What could Diamond be going for her now? All the ropes. Oh, spiked her face with Norka run. Followed by the twisting splash again. Diamond is now in Perkins' eyes. Oh, and that pulls on by Dana. Dana firing back a row. Corkscrew kick by Dana. The heel of her foot right to the face of Diamond. Ring awareness by Dana Brooks pulling away from the ropes. One, two, and Diamond kicks out again. What, what else does Dana have in the arsenal? Oh, just... Just straight ruthless aggression, I, I'm guessing. Oh, this pulls her into the clothesline. And Diamond tries to take a breather on the outside, but this time Dana goes out the meter. Went for a stomp. Instead, hit her with a bulldog. Dana Brooke, all in control. And working the leg, this time on the outside. And followed by a stomp right to the face. Then stomp to the back of the head. Then with this side, you just being disrespectful at this point. Oh, another diamond. Diamond gonna fight back. Throws her down. And diamond stepping on her hair. Stepping on pull. That's got to hurt. Real hair extensions. That is still getting pulled from the scalp. And then a kick to the back from diamond. And now diamond. Show off to the crowd, but all I did was give Dana time to recuperate. Dana on the outside as our ref kind of seven. Dana gets in. Diamond throws Dana into the corner. We could be doing the beginning of the end of this match. Dana fighting out. Have feet on the head, twisting Hurricane Rana again. Dana's lining Diamond up. This is the end. Got her up. Fisher. Fireman's carry. Michinoku driver by Dana. One, two. Diamond kicks out again. Dana going to the top rope. She crashed and burned last time. This is a swanton bomb by Dana Brooke. 
but not Dana not done with her yet. Picks her up again. Michinoku driver from the fireman's carry. One, two, three. Dana Brooke. In her first match in Unspeed Arkham's Wrestling, picks up the victory over a very game diamond. Welcome to Unspeed Arkham's Wrestling, Dana Brooke. And for those of you, who, for, for anyone else who wants to maybe join Unspeed Arkham's Wrestling, uh, comment down below, comment a wrestler. If you have a community creation, comment a community creation. Um, I have a Discord. I just haven't linked it at all. If you want to join the Discord, let me know. Comments below. But we'll be right back. We got two more matches left. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time, not for tag action, but the close thing to having the show right now. The following match is scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first, from Kyoto, Japan, weighing in at 220 pounds, one half of the undisputed wrestling tag team champions, the Asian Psycho, Kobayashi. Yashi. Like he didn't say he's a psycho. On the last show, he was chilling in the rafters when uh, Antonio Franco was talking about him winning the gauntlet match and the other oh, the, the, oh, two members of House Power winning the tag titles. And Kobe was just, like I said, Kobe was just sitting in the rafters. Then when, when Antonio Franco is getting the upper hand in his match, he comes out and package Paul drives him on the outside. All because he was, all because you heard him talking. And now Bobby Blaze is here for revenge. And his opponent, from Ponte Verde Beach, Florida, waiting in at 204 pounds, representing the House of Power, Bobby, Blaze. Bobby Blaze asked management for this match in particular. Well, specifically, both men, Bobby Blaze and his tag partner, Wyatt Willis, asked for this match in particular. But Bobby Blaze got there first, so Bobby Blaze gets the match. And, but both members of House of Power were not happy with their their friend and I want to say Peter, but don't quote me on that. Getting getting blindsided in his opportunity to challenge for the pure wrestling title. Bobby Blaze was not having it. So now we are on the way. Bobby Blaze. Oh, the rep is down, and these guys are. Just Fighting! Kobayashi gets the best of him and we're on the outside. Oh, the weave. And Kobayashi is driving his face right into the floor. Bobby Blaze, this is not where Bobby Blaze wants to be. On the outside with a rep down. He can, Kobayashi can do whatever he wants. He got him in a modified figure four just working on the legs. Of Bobby Blaze as Kobayashi gets in the room. Never mind, he's chasing on the outside. The ref is now getting up. I believe the match has officially started. As now Bobby Blaze is on the on the attack. Bobby Blaze probably feels like rage as Kobayashi back on top throws him into the into the barricade and drives him in their back first. I say this every show and I'm gonna say it again. There is there is actual railing on the back. That is only covered by a thin sheet. 
as Kobayashi throws Bobby Blaze back into the ring. As Kobayashi goes to the top rope. Elbow right to the back. Kobayashi focusing on the back of Bobby Blaze as we have a cover ref getting position. One, two. First pinfall is a two count. Kobayashi has the leg strapped. Oh, he's stomping on him, messing up the knee. The focus of attack for Kobayashi is through his knees and back. Bobby Blaze returns a favor, kick to the leg, forearm to the face. Snap mirrors him down off the rope. Oh, just a boot to him. Kobayashi got right back up. Bobby Blaze picks him up. Falcon arrow. Kobayashi again though gets right back up and goes right back to work. Kobayashi trying picking him apart. Working the back, the legs, the arms, stops on the back. That's another cover. One, two, another two count. Kobayashi looking to put this match away. Arms hooked. Package pile driver by Kobayashi. Antonio Franco, I guess returning the favor. As I said before, Kobayashi coughs Antonio Franco in match last week by attacking him. It looks like Antonio Franco has come out to return the favor. Oh, roll up by Bobby, roll up by Bobby Blaine. One, two, three, three, that's it. Bobby Blaze has defeated one half of the head hunter. Bobby, bang, he got, Bobby got hit with a package power driver, but off the distraction from Antonio Franco, Bobby Blaze rolls up Kobayashi. The winner of the match, Bobby Blaze. And Kobayashi is upset and rightfully so, but turnabout is fair play, Kobayashi. Bobby Blaze picks up the victory. As ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our main event. It is main event time. And the challenger is coming out first. Ladies, gentlemen, and people in between. This is your main event of the evening scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by Mandy Rose, from the Bronx, New York, weighing in at 119 pounds, a list, Jade. A list Jade is going into this completely blind. She doesn't know who Kathleen Grace chose for her. And I can't feel sorry for Ailis Jade because she did this same thing to Kathleen a few weeks ago before their title match. And her opponent, accompanied by the undisputed wrestling women's world champion, Kathleen Grace, from San Francisco, California, waiting in at 130 pounds. She is the West Coast Angel, Holly. Very interesting. Unlike Ayla J, who when she did it, she went out and found Mandy Rose. Kathleen Grace chose her friend. She chose her friend Callie to defend her honor. Which, which Kathleen and Callie have have been successful in tag team action so it only be right that she chose her friend in this very crucial match if Ayla J wins this Ayla J gets the title rematch against Kathleen as Callie straight out the gate with a Spanish fly and then working the arms 
Cali Grace, I will say, definitely made an inter interesting selection. Selection. Even this Cali's first singles match in Undisputed Arguments Wrestling. Oh, she went for the Spanish fly again, but Alice J judo flipped her over and then just double kick to the face. First pinfall of the main event is a one count. Yeah, Kathleen Grace could have chose anybody. But she chose her friend. It's admirable. Tru truly admirable. Oh, roll up by Kathleen. Not by Kathleen. By Callie, and that's a one count. Oh, and then a drop kick by Ayla's Jade. Ayla's Jade. Just a whole lot of punches. And rolls it outside. Staring down Kathleen Grace. Kathleen moving out of the way. As half and half suplex on the floor. I think Ayla's Jade's head clipped the floor before she fully rotated. Back elbow in return. And net breaker. Return to favor. Putting her head round the floor. And just throws her into the ring post. Followed by another neck breaker. Cat. Catherine. Did Catherine Grace make a mistake in picking Callie? As Ayla's Jade is full in control. Russian leg sweep. Ayla's Jade has full control of Callie as she gets in, as she runs in the ring to break the count. Callie trying to get her bearings. And now they're both back in the ring. Alright, throws her off. Callie goes under. Callie goes over. Callie with a with an arm drag. Like a hip up arm drag. Oh, and it snatched up that knee bar by Callie. The quick movements by Callie. Followed the arm drag by quickly snatching the leg up. And that will definitely, that could definitely come back to affect her. Oh! And just, oh, stretching the back out. Very mat based style by Cali. We didn't get to see a lot of what Cali could do in the tag match when Kathleen and Cali defeated uh, Girl Dynamite and Yamashita Alice. So this is kind of her in her introduction into the singles world. Oh, a little miscommunication on Callie's part and gets a form for her trouble. I think Ailey Jay went for a takedown. Oh, and a hurricane runner by Callie. Callie throws her into the corner. Like went up the corner, but countered. Oh, Callie goes over. Oh, and he goes under and big clothesline by Callie. Callie has all the momentum right now. Throws her back into the corner. Oh, Mandy Rose. You knew this would happen. You knew Mandy Rose being out here. She would cause a distraction. And Callie is sitting there arguing with her. Oh, my God. It's the spider. Itsy Bitsy the spider. Attacking Kathleen Grace while the ref is busy with Manny Rose. Oh, kick to the head. She hit her over the head with a chair and then kicked her in the head as well. Callie's just now seeing what happened on the outside. Oh, no. And Ayla's J is going to take advantage of her. Take advantage. Oh, knee right to the face of Callie. One. Two, three. Oh, man. Can we get some, first off, can we get some help for Cap? Kathleen got cracked with that chair. It's being a crack. Ayla's J cracked Callie with that knee right to the face. Off the distraction. The winner of the match, Alyssa J. And Alice J, the man in the ref, pulled her hand up. As she, I hope you're proud of what you just did. How how can you be proud? But I hope you are at least. Oh, 
looks like Ava Shade isn't done, and both Manibus and it's missing a grim drop kick. Callie tried to get up her hand with the kendo stick. Kathleen Grace is still out of it on the outside, and oh, just kendo sticks. You hear the sound. That's wood cracking on her body. Ayla J going out, going to the outside to pick up, pick the bones of Cal. Cali can't know where she's at right now. Oh, now she's getting lined up. She's getting lined up by Mandy Rose. And a bicycle knee by Mandy Rose. Oh, uh, now it's Vision trying to get. Oh, Kyle's trying to fight back. Oh, the, the numbers game it is three on one. Oh, kick to the head again. That's the same kick that just that had Kathleen Grace on the floor on the outside. It's been it's been throws her back into the ring, and now Ailis Jade has her lined up. ALJ, don't do this. You don't have to do this. A black girl magic. ALJ, no. no ALJ, what are you doing? ALJ, no. No, don't do that. No. No, what? Why would you just rip the pants off of Kelly? Why? Just a disgusting act by these three. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on. Thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm sorry, I'm just that. That's the disgusting act.